Welcome to Dent Reviews. Today I want to do a review of the Moondrop S8. I want to give a special thanks over to MRS at Super Review. Um, he was kind enough to loan me his set here, and uh, it is a phenomenal set. Um, before I get into that, this is a about a $700 earphone. So yes, they're expensive. $700 is not something to balk at, um, you know, for a lot of people that's a lot of money to put into something like an earphone. Um, but I do think it can be worth it, depending on the earphone, and, and I think these are a set that really do have a lot to offer. Um, so, first things first, the build and the accessories. Um, you'll see here, it's got a similar build to the other Moondrop earphones, the Blessing 2 and the Dusk, which I've reviewed, if you want to check that out. Um, it's a little bit lighter. The driver inside, all of the drivers inside of this are balanced armature, whereas the Dusk and the Blessing 2 have a dynamic driver. That adds a lot of weight, so these are actually a lot lighter. Uh, but it's got a similar 3D printed shell. Um, I don't know if it's acrylic or plastic or what it is, but it's translucent, which I absolutely love. You can see all the inner components here. It's very gorgeous. It's got a sort of like a braided, hand braided cable is what it looks like with a two pin connector. It's kind of a standard moon drop connector. It's a nice looking cable. It's got this honkin' Y split that I'm not a huge fan of, but really it hasn't bothered me at all. The more I use them, the less I even notice it. But I would prefer a smaller midsection there personally. Um, I took the little Velcro thing it comes with and I create a Y split cord lock. It's got a right angle connector, also translucent plastic. Decent quality. The cable's nothing amazing. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It's just sort of in between. I feel like it's durable enough. It's an attractive cable. It's nice looking. Um, time will tell how long it lasts, I suppose. The shells have a sort of silver faceplate to them. And in the faceplate, it's got a cutout S8 that you can see through. All very, very nice. The aesthetics are gorgeous. I love it. Um, it's got a pretty thick nozzle, similar to the Moondrop uh, Dusk in, in B2. It's got like a multi-port openings here with all the different air canals that come out. But it's a little bit hefty, so if you have thin ear canals, this might be a little bit of pressure. It, it may prove to be uncomfortable. For me personally, I like that thick nozzle on all their earphones. It helps me get an easy... Um, deep seal with no air leakage, which actually can be slightly problematic on this one, which I'll get into in a minute. But its comfort is great. It's, it's For me personally, it fits really well. It's got a sort of a half custom design. They do a really good job of making this sort of custom ear shape without making it so unique that it's you know only going to fit one person. It actually is universal, but custom in in look and feel so it's very comfortable i like that a lot personally it sits in the ear really nicely because it's light it's lightweight it's not very you know heavy in your ears that's nice for long listening sessions the only thing would be the nozzle just keep that in mind depending on your ears you may find that comfortable or not comfortable that's sort of the build quality the accessories it comes with are the same as the dusk and the blessing too um, these are other tips i have but it comes with the standard round tips you can check out my other review if you want to see those and it also comes with a similar case um, i believe the case is a different color but it's one of the pleather just kind of big cube cases Pretty much the same exact thing as the Blessing 2. It's just the earphone itself is an 8 balance armature driver earphone. Um, there are four housings and each of them is a dual balanced armature driver from what I understand. You can see it's got the little circuit here with some resistors and whatnot that must handle all the crossovers and whatnot. Um, and it's got the 3D printed canals that come out the nozzle. So that is the design of the earphone. Now let me try to get a really good close up here. So this is as close as I can get here. You can see the look of it is very nice. So you can see it has a very nice aesthetic. It's a very nice look. Uh, build quality, I think, is durable. Uh, again, the cable, relatively durable. Not amazing, but it feels like it's a decent cable. The housing of these feels pretty durable in that they're light. So if you drop them or smack them, I don't think it's going to dislodge anything or damage anything um, also the way they're 3d printed i think all those housings are really kind of molded in there tightly so i don't think they're going to ever move so i think it's a pretty durable earphone but again time will tell are these worth 700 dollars what do they sound like well 
the overall frequency response, and if you know me, you know that that's pretty important. Um, the S8 frequency response is phenomenal. In, in, in fact, it's probably the nicest graphed frequency response I've seen so far. Um, it's got a perfect relative base, mid, and treble coherency. There's just a great, great linearity across the spectrum. Nothing is super peaky or has any major dips. It's all very smooth from start to finish, left to right, top to bottom. Uh, it's just a very, very good frequency response. It's a little bit like the Blessing 2 Dusk in the base quantity. Um, it's definitely got a good base quantity uh, for what I consider a neutral earphone. It's got the quantity, but not really the texture and the quality. Um, because the Dusk has a little bit more texture and impact basically because of the dynamic driver that they used for the bass. This is all balanced armature drivers. And the more I listen to balanced armature drivers, especially nice ones, the more I do kind of believe that there is a difference in the texture, maybe the impact, just the overall quality of the bass and treble between a balanced armature and a dynamic driver. So I think the Dusk bass is a little bit better quality maybe, um, but at the same time, because the S8 has such a neutral and even frequency response, I actually believe that the S8 is probably still overall better bass quality because the quantity sits so well with the rest of the spectrum. The Dusk so, so slightly comes through as overbearing sometimes, and with the treble being slightly softer, it also has just an overall more bass-driven tone. Whereas the S8, in my mind, sounds phenomenally neutral from top to bottom. So, no, it may not have the most texture or hard firmness to the bass, but I believe that it still resolves bass instruments and bass tones at a more appropriate level that fits into the mix better. So in that regard, I think it's better. Same as the treble. I think the treble, compared to some dynamic drivers, um, has a B, BA, balanced armature, kind of plastic sound. I do believe the more I listen to it, the more I hear that. I think things like the JVC FDX01, I think has superior treble to this and superior bass, actually. I think that earphone, being a dynamic driver earphone, is superior in texture and quality across the entire spectrum, but the frequency response of that earphone is not as good as the S8. The S8 neutralizes the 4 kilohertz hump on the JVC and also brings back some of the 2 kilohertz region and extends the treble better and has just super, super linear mids and bass. So I think that from a purely frequency response point of view, the S8 is better, but it is a balanced armature only earphone. And I really kind of wish that they had taken this and made it a hybrid like the Dusk, but maybe that was just a newer earphone, I don't know. So frequency response is superb. How about technicalities, if you want to call it that? I think this has a really good imaging. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the best I've ever heard from left to right, it's got a very wide stereo image, and all instrumentation is incredibly precise in location. So you can pick out instruments and where they are in that 3D sound field, no problem. There's a lot of depth. I think that the treble extension being so linear and so high up really gives a little bit more air and ambience to the sound and the atmosphere of the recording so that things sound a little bit more precise, more layered, and more distinct in the sound field. So I think that, could there be better? Sure, I think there's probably earphones out there that do that better. But given the frequency response and the technical performance and the price, I think this is phenomenal in all those things I just described, the, the width, the separation, the clarity. It's just such a good blend of frequency response and technical precision that I would say that this puts this earphone in probably the one of the highest brackets of just pure quality. Um, for $700, I don't think you're going to get much better quality than this. There's a few alternatives that are out there that I'll actually be hearing the Thigh Audio Monarch pretty soon, so I'll review that. That's similar. Um, it has what looks to be on graph anyway, a less accurate bass shelf, but a little bit more isolated to sub bass. And it's also, I believe, a dynamic driver. So 
that could change the tone a lot and texture of the bass, and it could be for the good, I don't know yet. Um, but treble-wise, I think this graphs better than that. Um, the clairvoyance is a little bit closer to this in treble response, but even then, I think this graphs better. Will it sound better? I don't know. There's different driver technologies in those earphones. They're hybrids, whereas this is strictly a balanced armature. So they could prove to be superior. Some reviewers think they are. But for strictly balanced armature, frequency response, technicalities, and price, I think the S8 so far is the best I've ever heard. Given the balanced armature type of sound, I think the quality you get from this is absolutely phenomenal. I wish they had a dynamic driver version of this. Um, I'm getting the illumination pretty soon. I just I bought that myself. I got a used copy, and that is their flagship dynamic driver. It does not graph as well as this, but it still graphs very well, and I'm hoping that the illumination has the qualities of a dynamic driver with something similar to the tonality of the S8. If so, that'll be something to reckon with, but um, some reviewers don't think that it's as good. Time will tell. I'll have that soon. I'll give you a review on that and also the Monarch and kind of that'll give you a slight comparison of some alternatives in the price range. But all else given with the balanced armature drivers as you know the sound that they have, I think the S8 is probably the best bang for your buck at $700. If that's in your price range and you're looking for something that is semi custom in design with phenomenal frequency response and does nothing wrong there's no flaws in the sound there's no peaks there's no dips there's nothing irritating then this is probably the earphone i would go with the only negative that i have personally in this earphone and it's not really the earphone's fault but it's an unvented earphone so what that means is that unfortunately especially with the stock tips these create a lot of pressure in my ear when i push these into my ear and it's very hard if I pull out, it causes negative pressure or suction. It's very difficult and time consuming for me to balance the air pressure. I can do it, and with the stop tips it's possible. I can push up and do this, twist it, whatever, and kind of neutralize that vacuum seal so it's, it's neutral. But if I don't do that, it's not only uncomfortable, but it causes some suck out in the sound in like the lower mids and the mids. and just kind of skews the frequency response. So. I did find that these Mayelec or Me Electronics, um, they've changed their name, these dual flange tips that I've had for a long time have the same borehole size and fit well. These, I personally find, allow me to insert them much easier to the correct depth and to um, alleviate almost all of that suction that I would get from that non-vented design. The Dusk and the Blessing 2 are vented because of the driver that they have the dynamic driver so those don't have that problem uh, but you can see that ear tip fits really well it stays on there nicely and uh, it just it fixes the problem for me so that's just something to consider with the large nozzle the suction depending on your ears you may want to experiment definitely try different tips um, it worked for me and now that i have a tip i'd be comfortable keeping the s8 knowing that it would sound good and feel comfortable so that is kind of the overview uh, comparisons to a few different earphones, I said the JVC FDX01, I think does sound better in quality in terms of its dynamic driver texture and, and tonality, but the frequency response to the S8 is better. It has less of a hump at 4 kilohertz, so it's less shouty, if you want to call it that. It also has more 2 kilohertz area, so it's a little bit more presence in that kind of cool mid-treble area, and the bass is just very linear. So... I would say that the dynamic driver equivalent of this would have to be the closest thing as the JVC. I think that's the best dynamic driver I've ever heard uh, for an earphone. Um, hopefully the illumination will come close to that. Regarding the Dusk, the Blessing 2 Dusk, it is actually incredibly similar to this. So much so that I would say that if you are looking for something and you don't want to spend $700, just buy the Dusk and just stop looking. The bass response is very similar. I think the Dusk has better bass quality in terms of the texture and impact, but it's maybe just a little bit too much quantity, just ever so slightly too much. But it is luckily isolated very low, so it's a little bit more of the thump than it is like a, a masking effect from warmth or anything like that. The treble of the Dusk is also incredibly similar to this, but it does not have that last bit of air and extension that these have, and it doesn't have as much of the mid-treble presence 
by just a small degree that the S8 has. So the S8 really gives you that kind of holographic, transparent treble, whereas the Dusk can sometimes sound just a little bit on the subdued and relaxed side, which is not a bad thing, and some people may prefer that, but um, for just a strictly neutral sound, I think the S8 is better. But the Dusk is by far... I think really the benchmark at $320, I don't think you can beat it. So price-wise, if that's your price range, go with the Dusk. The Blessing 2, well, it's basically the same thing as the Dusk with two minor differences. The base shelf is lower, so it's a little bit more linear in terms of base, closer to something like an Edemotic base target. So it's leaner, which gives the treble a little bit more of an open sound, which I do like that regard, but... The Blessing 2 has a very slightly, just slightly more peaky treble in around the 6 to 8 kilohertz region that the Dusk sort of kind of mellowed out a little bit. So if you want a leaner sound, a little bit more open treble, but you don't mind a little bit of the maybe unevenness, I think the Blessing 2 is the way to go. If you want something with a little bit more oomph in the low end and a little bit more relaxed sound, I think the Dusk is the way to go. But if you want that true linear neutrality with no flaws and no obvious peaks, peaks or dips anywhere, and you can forward the 700 bucks or get it used even, the S8 is by far the way to go. It's highly recommended. So... That is my review. I'm going to stop it there. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Leave them in the comments. Check out my other reviews coming soon. And as always, thank you guys for watching.